Bless you. That's a word from the Lord. I would that you would turn your attentions this morning to Matthew, the third chapter and the seventh verse. Matthew 3 and 7. Matthew 3 and 7. From came I may do 51 this morning, 52 this morning, if you don't mind. God will take care of you. God will take care of you. Amen. God bless you. Matthew, the third chapter and the seventh verse. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to the baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who has warned you to flee from the wrath to come, bring forth therefore fruit meet for repentance, and think not to say within yourselves, We have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you, that God is able of those stones to raise up children unto Abraham. And now, also the axe is laid unto the root of the tree. Therefore, every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewed down and cast into the fire. I indeed baptize you with water and repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. So shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire, whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garnet. But he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Let us read verse number 11 together. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I'm not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. He who is coming. That's what I want to talk about. He who is coming. Amen. Be not dismayed. Whatever be time. Somebody need to know that this morning. God will. Take care of, of you. Beneath his wings of love abide. Anybody know he'll take care of you? God will. I know he will take care oh, of you. If you know he'll take care of it, just reach over and just grab somebody by the hand and tell them, God will take care of you. The day. All the way He will Take care Of you Oh God will Take care Of be rough for you right now you may be trying to wonder how you're going to make ends meet you may be trying to wonder how you're going to make your children's Christmas how you're going to make sure that everything is going to work out all right but I stop by to tell you oh God will take care of you through every day over all the way he will. Can, 
you help me out this morning? Tell about three folks that he sure will, he sure will, he sure will. He will take care. No husband, don't worry about it. Of you. You may have just lost your job oh, of you. You may be really struggling, don't know how no nowhere to lay your head, but I stop by to tell you, God, God will take care of you. He'll step in just in the nick of time. Through every day Over All the way He will Say I tried it for myself Take care Financially Medically Burden barren, a lawyer for you, of you. Oh, God, have mercy, Lord. God will. I feel something in this house. I said, God will. God will. <laughs> Whatever you're going through, you need to know God will. I said He will. He will. God will. You may have an upset home, but God will. God will. I said God will. Take care of you. God bless you this morning. God bless you. There's a word from the Lord. He who is coming. As we approach this Christmas series, this morning of sermons, we cannot really venture off and talk about Jesus without first talking about his forerunner, John the Baptist. Notice here in Matthew this morning, John the Baptist walks onto the page of the scripture all of a sudden. Now in the book of Luke, Luke chapter 1 verse 11, we read about how Luke describes how an angel came from heaven and announced the birth of John the Baptist to his father, Zechariah. Zechariah was a priest. He was attending to his priestly duties when the angel Gabriel came and announced the birth of John the Baptist. He said to him, he said, you and your wife Elizabeth will have a son and his name will be called John and you will have joy and gladness and many will rejoice at his birth. But he also tells him he will be an unusual child. He will be a Nazarite. In other words, he will not cut his hair and he will not eat like ordinary folk. He will not have strong drinks, and he will come preaching, prepare ye the way of the Lord. He will be the forerunner of Jesus Christ. He will be the forerunner, and the only time you will see him after his birth is preaching in the wilderness. Now notice Luke gives the account of him, of his birth. 
But then after he gives the account of his birth, then show him even in the book of Luke in the wilderness. But in the book of Matthew, notice he's only shown in the wilderness. Are you with me? Well, my brothers and sisters, uh, when you look at this thing, when you look at this thing this morning, it, it makes you wonder why did they not give more account of John the Baptist's ministry since he is the cousin of Jesus. Now, we don't know how long he had been preaching in the wilderness, but we do know that he, had, he was six months older than his cousin, Jesus. We do realize that he was six months older, so he had to be around 30 or 31 years old when Jesus came to him in the wilderness. Because the Bible says that while John the Baptist was there baptizing those in the in, in, in repentance and calling them from uh, out from the world, baptizing them in the wilderness, the Bible says that Jesus himself comes along. And when Jesus comes along, the Bible says, Jesus says to him, baptize me. But what does John say? John says to Jesus, well, Jesus, really, I'm not worthy to baptize such a person as you. I'm not worthy to baptize my Lord and my Savior. But Jesus looked at him, and the Bible says, Jesus says to John the Baptist, John, just suffer it to be so. Are you listening to me? Can't you understand this morning how John felt when Jesus stepped up at the baptism? The Bible says something happened at the baptism. The Bible said when it took Jesus down and baptized Jesus, immersed him in the water and brought him back up. The Bible said that heaven opened up and the Bible said that God began to speak out said that a dove flew down and lit on his shoulder and God began to say this is my beloved son and whom I'm well pleased can I get some help in this house it must have been an awesome day the heaven opening up when God spoke out assuring John the Baptist that this is my beloved son Oh, my brothers and sisters, John the Baptist made it very clear that he was just the messenger. And Matthew this morning is also making it clear that, that John the Baptist was only the messenger preparing the way for Jesus Christ. Therefore, he walks out uh, the page onto the scripture this morning preaching in the wilderness of Judea. Notice what he's saying there in the wilderness of Judea as he preached there with, with, with wearing camel's clothing and he has, has, has long hair and the Bible says eating wild honey and locusts and the Bible says some people thought that it was crazy but by him preaching in the wilderness he gained the attention of others. Notice he did not have a choir with him. He did not have ushers on the door. He did not have a slate of deacons. Can I get some help? But is found preaching in the wilderness. The Bible said, notice what he's doing. He's preaching about something very unheard of. Are you listening to me? The Bible says he's preaching about repentance. Oh, my brothers and sisters, let us deal this morning. Let us deal with these expressions that he talks about. He says, repent ye. Repent ye. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Don't y'all see that? Let us deal with these expressions this morning. Repent ye is an expression that always has been given to God's people as a challenge to turn around. It has been given to God's people to turn their lives around. Are you listening to me? Repent this morning is the original Greek word. The original Greek word is metanoia. Metanoia, meaning to change your mind. Tell your neighbor, change your mind. You're going in one direction, 
turn around and now and go into another direction because you just repented, so don't keep going in the same direction. And it's an indication that's very strong this morning, my brothers and sisters, that a lot of us have not yet repented because a lot of us are still going in the same direction. And I told them the earlier this morning that all of us in here, in some time or another, we ought to repent. Don't none of us, including the pastor, don't none of us live so well that we shouldn't repent of our sins. I don't care how long you've been going in that direction. If you know that you're going in the wrong direction, you need to ask God to forgive you. Turn from your wicked ways and repent. Don't care what kind of attitude you have. Talking about, well, my grandmama was hateful. My daddy was a liquor drinker. I don't care what they did. You need to break that generational curse. That's nothing but a generational curse. And let me tell you something. The devil tries to make all of us think that we are less than. Can I get a witness? Look at this thing. He said, repent ye. Repent ye. He is, he's talking about turning into a new direction. Repent is primarily for saved people, God's people of all ages. That is what it's for. It's not for the sinner. Repentance is for the saved folk. Because, well, Reverend, what is for a plain old sinner? I'm glad you'll ask me. Romans 10 is for a plain sinner. So you can't repent until you've been saved. Can I get some help? That's just like going and getting your driver's license and ain't got no car. Or vice versa, go and get a car and you ain't got no driver's license. Can I get a witness in this house? You've got to be saved. Romans 10 says, confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead and thou shalt be saved. That's how you're saved. And once you're saved, you have to constantly repent. Why do I have to constantly repent, Reverend? I go to church every Sunday. That don't mean anything. Why do I have to repent, Reverend? I read my Bible all the time. That don't mean anything. Why do I have to repent, Reverend? I sing on the choir. That don't mean a thing. Why do I have to repent, Reverend? I preach the gospel to everybody. I try to get folk right. That don't mean a thing. But are you right? We have to go through a period in our lives, a daily period of repentance. Why? Because all of us are shapen in sin. We were born in sin. We were born in sin, my brothers and sisters, and for us to walk the way that God wants us to walk, for us to live like God wants us to live, we have to repent on a daily basis. I don't care how you try to fool other folk. You can't fool me. And you sure can't fool God. All of us have to repent. The Bible says, the Bible says you got to repent of your sins. And if you repent of your sins, can they mean confessing? And if you repent of your sins, he's just and faithful to forgive you for your sins. Isn't it? Won't you do that? But every child of God has to repent of their sins. And once you repent of your sins, because there are things that go through our minds. I can hear somebody say, well, I've gotten so old until I don't do nothing no more. Well, you may not be able to do anything, but you can sure think. The devil will put trash in your head. Then don't y'all act like he don't do that. The devil will do that. I've seen folk in the nursing home in, in, in wheelchairs. Can I get some help? I've seen folk confined to their bed that the devil using their minds. They find a way how to pick at folk. Find a way how to steal your joy. Find a way. Can I get some help in here? And by chance this morning you find yourself going into a direction that you know that God is not pleased with. It's time for you to repent. They are the ones whom he's talking about. We're the ones that he's talking about this morning to repent. They are the ones who, when they came, became cold and indifferent 
and turn from God. These are the ones that he sang to us this morning, repent. And that was a message that he gave to the seven churches in the book of Revelation. Has anybody read that? Now notice the book of Revelation, all seven of the churches were churches that God had established. All seven of those churches, some of them were doing some good stuff and some of them were not doing some good stuff. When you look at those seven churches, there was one that was lukewarm. He says, because you're neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. There was another one of those churches that was, had started worshiping a woman called Jezebel. The spirit of Jezebel, because the Bible calls her that woman. You have allowed that woman. Then there's another church that was just going through the motions. Can I get a witness? That church was just coming to church. They had a good choir. They had a good deacon board. Had a good trustee board. They were rich, had a lot of money, but they were just coming to church just to be coming to church. But it says to each one of them, I have some against you. He says to them, unless you repent. And notice in each one of those churches, he says, he that has ears to hear, hear what the Spirit, can I get some help in this out? Anybody got any ears this morning? I certainly hope that you're listening to what I'm saying because I got to listen to myself this morning. Jesus is telling them to repent. And the Bible says, here John is. John this morning is telling them to, be, to repent and be baptized, but he also tells them that they could only, that he could only preach repentance and baptism and baptize with water. He says, but there's one coming after. Tell somebody one coming after. He says, there's one coming after that will be baptizing with the fire and Holy Ghost. And if you really want to be powerful in your life, I'm not talking about the CEO on your job. I'm not talking about the CFO on your job. I'm not talking about having power in the church to tell folk what to do. I ain't talking about that kind of power. But if you want to have power in your life, you get baptized with the fire and the Holy Ghost. People will be running to you asking you to pray for them. They will be running to you. Can I get some help? Because they recognize that something is in your life. And it's not about you, but it's all about him. The power of the Holy Ghost. Oh, my brothers and sisters, I wish you'd give me some more volume up there. Notice what it says here this morning. He says, one coming after me. One coming after me. Uh, look at my first point this morning. My first point this morning, who is coming after? No, it's my first point. My first point is, if we are to be prepared, we must repent. Tell your neighbor, if we are to be prepared, we must repent. In verse number seven, John looks out at the crowd and notice what he does. When he looks out at the crowd, he calls them abroad of vipers. Am I right? What is, it, what is that? That's a generation or a group of poisonous snakes. That's heavy, y'all. He calls them a group of poisonous snakes. Now, now, now how in the world are you going to prepare somebody calling them a group of poisonous snakes? Sometimes you have to call it just like it is. Can I get some help? Now these were church folk that he's talking about. These were folk, they were Pharisees and Sadducees that came out to hear him. They came out to listen to John the Baptist. And notice here, he calls them a nation, a generation of vipers. Couldn't get too many suits for anniversaries. <laughs> Calling somebody a viper. He couldn't, he, couldn't, he couldn't get no choir to go with him on anniversaries and, and to follow him at another church if he had to preach, if he called them vipers. He couldn't have an effective deacon board if he called all of them vipers. He couldn't have a deacon right that would buy you suits on anniversaries if you call him viper. Can I get some help in here? 
wouldn't have a mother boy that would wear pretty hats and pretty dresses and deaconess that would wear pretty clothes and dress out and things like that. Wouldn't have an usher boy if, if I stepped him on, on, on Sunday morning and every time I opened up said you're nothing but a broad generation of vipers. But says it may sound, my brothers and sisters, we have a church full. We have poison in our mouths. We kill folk with our tongues. We kill people behind their backs. Nothing but a generational, a generation of vipers. And I stopped by to tell you this morning, this is not a shouting sermon. This is not a sermon to sweeten y'all up and make you feel good. If you don't give me a Christmas gift this year, it's all right. But all of us are guilty. And possibly, all of us are not vipers, but possibly there are some vipers in here this morning. Guilty of tearing folk down. And notice the characteristics of a viper. A viper slivers around. A viper won't come right in front of you. Now if you walk up on him now, here he is ready to strike. And I'm sure you walked up on some talking about you. And when you walk up on them talking about you, they get ready to strike. But they won't strike until you walk up on them. Most vipers, they, they do it behind your back. Can I get some help in this house? He calls them a generation of vipers. When he does this, notice it's not a bad thing. But what does it do? It gets their attention. It gets their attention. Look in Luke. Look in Luke chapter 3, verse 11. I didn't have time to do this this morning in 9 o'clock service. Look in Luke, chapter 3, verse 11. We're going to walk through this thing this morning. Look what it says. When he told them what he says, because he had the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and I told you, you got some Sadducees in every church. Sad, you see? In every church? They're sad about everything. They're sad about themselves. They're sad because of where they are in life. They're sad because they ain't got the man you got. They're sad because they ain't got as much money as you got. They're sad because they're just sad. When he, when he told them that they were vipers, notice what they said. He answered and saith unto them, he that has two coats, because in, in verse number 9 it says, now also the axe is laid upon the root, verse number 10, and the people ask him, saying, what? shall we do then they wanted to know how to make themselves better and my brothers and sisters you need to know what it's going to take to make yourself better are you listening to me that brings me to my second point start bearing some fruit and and, and make your mind up to do some just do some good but look at verse number 11 look at the verse number 11 he answers and said unto them he that hath two coats let him impart to him that hath none and he that hath meat let him do likewise. Then came unto also publicans, which is tax collectors, to be baptized. They came to be baptized when they realized they weren't what they were supposed to be. Notice what it says. And he said unto them, Master, what shall we do? And he said unto them, Ex act, uh, Extract no more than that which is uh, appointed you. In other words, don't take no more money than you're supposed to take. Look at verse number 14. Notice, he done got the tax collectors, he done got the Pharisees already. Now look at the soldiers coming. And the soldiers likewise demanded of him, saying, And what shall we do? And he says unto them, Do violence to no man, neither accuse any falsely, and be content with your wedges. Can I get some help in this out? Now he is telling them that they've already asked him what they need to do. He's already told them and notice one by one after he tells them what they have done, one by one they come and are baptized in repentance. 
I wish I had a line this morning that would come up this morning and say, you know what, I'm ready to repent. I'm ready to repent of my sins. I, I'm tired of going in the same direction. I got a nasty attitude. I, I got a low down disposition. I've been running around all this time. I don't, I, I, I'm a thief. I steal from folk. If I can't get you one way, I'll get you another way. I'm a, I'm a thief. I, I, I try to rob God. I don't pay my tithes and offerings. Can I get some help? You ought to come and repent this one. I know I'm supposed to be singing on the choir because, but I got hell in me, the reason I don't sing. I know I ought to be praising the Lord, but I got hell in me. I don't like the church. I don't like the folk in the church. I need to repent this morning. Brother Pastor, I need to repent because I've been going behind your back. I've been to everything you tried to push forward. I've been trying to tap down. I need to repent this morning. Every sermon that you preach, I go around your back and I tell other folks that ain't right. I need to repent this morning. I'm a man, I got a child over here, got a child over there, got another child over there. I don't own any of my children. I need to repent of my sins. I need to turn and go in the right direction. I've been going in the wrong direction, but now it's time for me to come to my senses. Do I have anybody in here that need to repent? You may fool me, but you sure can't fool God. Don't you think that you all that? All of us have done some stuff that we need to repent for. And let me tell you something, my brothers and sisters. Don't you look at these folk. Don't you look at us that's been in the church all our lives. Those of us that have been in church all of our lives just know how to hide our stuff a little better. Second point I told you, start bearing some fruit. In other words, make up your mind that you want to do better. Look at verse number eight. Look at verse number eight, what it says in verse number eight. It says, bring forth therefore fruit. Meet for repentance. In other words, bring forth fruit that's, that's, that's recognizable for repentance. And what kind of fruit can you bear? Somebody asked, what kind of fruit can you bear? The best fruit you can, can bear is one of them that's on the tree. It's called love, L-O-V-E, love. If you can bear that fruit of love, then you can have joy. If you can bear love, then you can have peace. If you can bear love, you can have hap. Can I get some help in here? You've got to learn to bear some good fruit. Look at John there. John is out there preaching in the wilderness. And the Bible says here, as he preached in the wilderness, the Bible says he preached repentance. What I like about John is John said it just like it was. Can I get a witness here? That brings me to my last point this morning. My last point this morning is we need to know that he that is coming is mightier and will baptize with the Holy Ghost and fire. Is there anybody in here this morning know that he is coming? I wish I could have talked to the Jews and told them to stop looking for Jesus because he's already been here. But what I like about it is he's coming again. Anybody know he's on his way back? Mm, I stopped by to tell you he's going to show up one day. Can I get a witness? I heard the Bible said that when he comes, uh, he's coming as a thief and a robber. Can I get a witness? He that is coming. 
I heard John the Baptist say, I'm not worthy to lace up his shoes. Can I get a witness? I don't know how you feel about this morning. I'm not worthy to lace up Jesus' shoes. But I'm so glad that he hung died on the cross that I can have some golden shoes. Can I get a witness and, and walk the streets of gold there in New Jerusalem? Can I get a witness? I heard, I heard, I heard, I heard Jesus say, I'm coming back again. I heard Thessalonians say, with a shout, with a voice of an archangel. The dead in Christ shall rise first, and we that remain shall be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. Can I get a witness? Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, it's one coming. Can I get a witness? Tell somebody else, because they didn't hear you. Say, one coming. His name is Jesus. His name is is wonderful his name is a prince of peace his name is mary's baby his name is a heart point in a valley his name is elohim his name is el shaddai his name jehovah jireh his name jehovah nisa his name his name is the Prince of Peace, his name, Mighty Counselor, his name, Wonderful God, his name, oh, sure. Anybody know him? Have you tried him? Do you know him? Hey, all right. Yeah, he is. On his way back, on his way back, on his way back. On his way back, I heard John said, the one that cometh after me, can I get a witness? They got mad with John. They killed John. But that's all right. When he come back, he gonna go back with Jesus. Can I get a witness? I heard Jesus say, I'm on my way back to get my church without a spot or wrinkle all you gotta do is repent of your sin for a few minutes this morning I don't want to worry you here this morning but just for a few minutes I'm cutting off the hooping now for a few minutes I want you to close your eyes look over your life See something in your life that you really, really want God to straighten out for you. Nobody knows you any better than you. This is not about your husband. This is not about your wife. This is not about mama, daddy, sister, brother, cousin, grandmama, granddaddy. This is all about you. And you ain't got to look too hard. You know what's in your life. You know that you ain't all that you should be. You know you got some stuff that you've been sweeping up under the rug a long time. You know some stuff that you've been thinking nobody knew about. It's some stuff in your life that you tried to change it, but you couldn't do it. Because every time you tried to change it, you went back to your same old ways. I thought I needed a pill to deal with some of my stuff. Anybody been there? I thought I needed a pill. I, I said, oh, my nerves are so shot. I didn't need no pill. I needed Jesus to speak to me. I, I, I needed him to minister to me. I needed him to guide my life. I went back in and I said, Lord, forgive me for those things that I've done. And forgive me. I want to repent, Lord, for things I said to people, places I went. I had no business going. And, 
and, and I, after I did that, I felt better about myself because what? I confessed to him that I needed him on my side. Not just on Sunday, but I needed him every day. So while you have your eyes closed this morning, look at something in your life that you want to straighten out. And repent this morning. Repent. It may be a fetish. fetish. It, 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 it may be something this morning that you just can't stop eating. You just can't stop tell a lie. You just may can't stop doing whatever you can't stop doing. I ain't going to go down the line because I may be going down too far. But it may be something that nobody knows about but just you. Repent and ask God to forgive you this morning. Ask God to forgive you. Whatever it is in your life, ask God to forgive you. And after you've asked God to forgive you and you've repented of your sins, then you ask God, God, help me to love myself help me to love myself i've been keeping stuff i've been accusing myself of stuff that i couldn't handle it's things i fell short of i i fell short of rearing my children i felt short of being the kind of lady that i need to be i felt short of being the kind of man i needed to be i fell short of trying to be the kind of Christian that you wanted me to be. I fell short. I fell short. But God, here I am now. I'm asking you to forgive me. Help me, Lord, to just be what you would have me to be. I mean, if you've never been serious anymore in your life, be serious this morning. Because I don't want you to walk out of here the same way you walked in. This baggage that you walked in here this morning, leave it in here. Leave it in here and let God handle it. Because God this morning, he has a wagon that he's already dispatched the Holy Spirit down. He want to load that wagon up with all of your baggage. All of the stuff that you've been carrying around. He's going to load it back up this morning. And guess what? He ain't going to take it back to heaven. He's going to send it straight to the pits of hell where it belongs. That thing that's been plaguing you that thing that's been hindering you from being what God wants you to be, that thing that you've been carrying around with you, put it right in here. He's going to put it, tell somebody, put it on the wagon, put it on the wagon. After you finish praying, after you finish praying and repenting, we're going to extend the invitation this morning. 